Coming up this week, Pedro reviews a laptop. Linux goes mobile. Mint embraces flat packs. And Microsoft did something cool? Mm, all those plus your emails. Hey, look, it's not a great day for Linux, everyone. Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. I'm Ben Stone here with Pedro Mateus, sitting back, relaxing, taking that midweek break just to have a chat about some of the nifty um, fun things. Can we say fun things going on in the world of Linux? Uh, fun's probably a stretch. I mean, someone is getting a kick out of it, that's for sure. But uh, I always get a kick out of it, man. It's a learning experience. Uh, I mean, we wouldn't really call ourselves a news show. I mean, it's like all the news without any of that pesky accuracy because <laughs> we're basically you we're just taking a look maybe we found some stuff that you would find interesting and uh what's been going on man is it finally uh winter time on the island not yet oh, yeah. actually it's been getting uh warmer over these past couple of days i wear my t-shirt and i'm sweating <laughs> so uh yeah no it's uh it's actually been pretty warm but they do say that the temperatures will drop over the weekend by like five celsius mm -hmm. so that's significant <laughs> yeah i got up this morning to go running and it was six <laughs> so it hit 20 here today oh pff, dude it's <laughs> 14 right now and that's nice and warm but enough talking about the weather because uh, there's something that everyone's taken a stab uh, stab at, I guess I should say, and Samsung is going to throw their hat in the ring. That's right. Yeah. Man. Linux is coming to select. Select? Galaxy devices via DeX. What is DeX? Well, it's the mythical device that uh, everyone's tried to make so far. No one really has. It's the dock for your smartphone, the boom, instant desktop. But DeX, the DeX station if you want mm -hmm. to call it that, it is going to let you run Linux as an app. Basically, theoretically, I guess you could say any distribution that you wanted to run, you could. And they, they do say Android Authority. We'll have all this in our show notes. But it's uh, not ready like all no. the other ones. Uh, are, are you excited about this? The I... Much like you, I am on that boat that wants to see this happen. I want to have that experience that you come home and you take your phone out of your pocket, you dock it into a place, boom, you got yourself a workstation, good to go, ready to rock, that's it. But we're not really there yet, and for all the, um, well, for all the attempts that everyone's been making, Samsung being the latest... It, it, there are still some shortcomings, and Samsung's, to be fair, it is basically all you have right now is that render that you see on Android Authority. And the DeX application itself is meant to be a an application geared towards developers. And then you have the DeX station, which is what you see to render there, which looks like a screen, not too dissimilar from my two screens, go figure, with one of those Mac-style uh, keyboards and a little wireless mouse. That... It sounds really awesome. I really want that to happen. And if Samsung is the one to do it, well, I won't personally like it. But hey, someone did it. So chances are there, there will be some more people trying it. And someone is bound to get it right. I just hope it's not Samsung that does get it right. Well, I mean, it could be, could not be. I just the entire concept, I, I think, when you're sitting back thinking about it, is even the fact of having to plug it into a dock is something that will eventually be going away. It's yeah. just going to be there. And they mobiles will definitely be powerful enough in just 10 years from now. Hashtag battery technology. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, it could be a thing, but then you end up with a dock and a bunch of wires and it's well, not good. To be fair, they only have the one wire there. It's the one that plugs from the uh, little docking unit mm -hmm. to the monitor. Everything else is wireless. But what I do like about this is if they roll it up, run, being, just being able to run Linux as an yeah. app and installing whatever distribution you want for that one Linux app that you want, and ARM is definitely going, well, currently is powerful enough where you can probably get away with it mm -hmm. reasonably. So fun to see that. Thought we'd give it a mention. But, Pedro, something that came out, 
Well, just the fact that it came out kind of floored us. And uh, oh, yes. one of our, uh, our Ohio correspondent, Atomic, I guess we can yes. call him, he did a review for us of the one he received, and it wasn't complete rubbish. Was the GPD win, and they're going for round uh, two. GPD Pocket was the one that uh, Atomic reviewed, and yeah, you may want to go back a month or so in the uh, Linux Weekly Little Wednesdays, and you'll see the video that we're talking about. But yeah, uh, Atomic got himself a GPD Pocket back in the day, and I will be the first one to admit that I expected that Indiegogo campaign campaign to fail miserably. But turns out it came out, and now they have a little bit of a prototype um, on display for the new GPD Win. Now, the GPD Win line, they already had the first one out a few years back, and it was... A portable gaming console that ran a full version of Windows or Linux, if you were crazy enough to try and install that on there. But it worked. The controls are your standard uh, A, B, X, Y, uh, with the two um, analog knobs and a D-pad. So that's what you sort of expect coming from, you know, something that's geared at gaming. The keyboard looks to be a bit uh, crappy. But well, it come is on, come on, be, be fair. I mean, if you're you're, you're shoving a I, any type of handheld keyboard, it's going to be just junk. Yeah, it's going to be like those uh, those old uh, Blackberries that held the full QWERTY keyboard. Mm. That's probably what you're going to be expecting. Hey, man, but people still buy Blackberries for that reason. Some people just say, you can't type on glass. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you learn. You learn, man. Uh, one of the things with this is they are upgrading from their old Atom to that Core M3. Mm -hmm. So It's uh, an M3Y, so you're still looking at a little bit of a loss in terms of performance, but you gain a lot when it comes to the uh, power consumption. So, yeah, it's not going to be as powerful as an i3, but yeah, it's it's going to be better than the Atoms. It, it's going to be better than the Atoms, and it, it's almost to the point where you start thinking... I think it's steam crammed on this thing. <laughs> of course you can. <laughs> It'll be as ridiculous. I have a um, quad core Batril x86 tablet. It was like one of those Windows 10 things I just bought on a lark and it runs steam. So yeah. I can actually play some games with its integrated Intel video. This is neat. Uh, did they say anything about the price point? Uh, not right now. They basically all they did was unveil the prototype, mm -hmm. uh, but Chances are we will probably see either an announcement uh, that, yes, it's coming out, or, look, we're doing an Indiegogo campaign for this one as well, mm. which my money, as it is right now, probably be on the latter, but who knows? Maybe they actually got enough sales out of the GPD pocket to say, look, the Win 2 is not going to crowdfunding, and it's instead just going to be released like a real respectable computer, handheld as it may be. Well, I mean, it could be, and... This is kind of, I don't even want to put this gently as how I want to put it, because the, what was the Pyra? Oh, the, uh, the, or Dragon, the Dragon Box Pyra, the, uh, everyone knows what we're talking about. Uh, uh, the one that was kind of like this, a little more boxy, looked like an older version of Game Boy. It was like $9,000. I'm exaggerating only. To <laughs> yeah, no, it was the arm based one. Uh, it's been around for so long. Not to I dwell forgot. on it, but I mean, that was definitely niche and the people who love them, love them. And they, they will say disparaging remarks about your mother if you say something bad about that device. But going into production the first time, it's kind of interesting to see that there was enough demand to justify. All right, let's come back and give this a refresh because that's mm -hmm. what this looks like is definitely more of a refresh than a full on. Here's a brand oh, yes. new device. Right. And they did say in, instead of a 5.5, it looks like because somebody went all beautiful mind in that embedded YouTube video with measuring out. It, it looks like it's a six inch screen instead of 5.5. So it's got that going for it. Yeah, it is slightly bigger. But then again, that also means a better uh, experience while you're trying to hold it. Hmm. Uh, yeah. quite, quite, quite possibly. I, little, little tiny devices like this, useless for me. Sorry. <laughs> It, yeah. But you have Van Hens, yes. It's uh, <laughs> terrifying. So, somebody sent us a laptop. Like, what is this, like the third? 
laptop. Yep, this open. is the third one. <laughs> they don't learn. They just keep coming. <laughs> and uh, Pedro took a look at it, man. It is the Infinity Book Pro 13. You know it's a Linux laptop because look, it's. Can we stop? It's got you, can, on the keyboard. Can, can we stop using? Hey, I run Linux. Everyone uses this as their first uh, avatar icon. I'm guilty of it. It was on our original shows. I, I'm just saying, learn from my mistakes. Um, tell me about it. I've never heard of it. Well, uh, it is the uh, it uh, the actual unit is based on the Clevo NB one thirty U or N130BU. I always get confused. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's very similar to another one which also exists on the market, which I will not mention by name because they've ignored all my emails up to this point, so F them. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, Tuxedo did not ignore my emails. In fact, they when they sent me an email, they said, yeah, we'd already uh, thought about getting in touch with you guys. We just didn't really know what to send you. So I told them, send us to the desktop uh, or the laptop that you're most proud of. And they delivered. Not now. They uh, they do have the they do do the same Clevo based thing that most of every other uh, Linux reseller does, like Androware, so on and so forth. But what they do is they put a very customized version of Ubuntu, which whichever um, uh, desktop environment you want, and they send me that packed with their version of Shubuntu, which is actually amazing i thought i was gonna go in and since they let me keep the laptop for a month i thought i was gonna go in and i would just make it run better and have the battery last longer well i made it run slightly better marginally barely and when it come when it came to the battery life they curb stomped me very much so they pretty much put me back in my place so yes this is a laptop that even though the hardware is nothing new when it comes to the software, they did a really good job. Also, just a quick mention, keyboard, not terrible. I guess that's good. <laughs> I don't know, man. I thought you hated any and all chiclet keyboards. I do. By definition, I do. But this one has just long enough throw at the keys to feel not as bad. And it is sturdy. It is a sturdy keyboard. So you can feel you feel you actually do feel like you can smack on it as much as you want. And it's not going to pop a cap at any point. <laughs> so weight-wise, what does it feel like? Uh, it's very light. It's 1.3 kilos. That's about the same weight as my 10-inch uh, netbook. Mm -hmm. It's very thin. It's very portable. If I carried it around with me a couple of times, I put it in my um, man bag, so to speak. Uh, <laughs> don't take that one out of context. Uh, <laughs> And no, I, I at one point I was like, oh, did I forget the laptop somewhere? And I reached back. No, no, it's still there. Wow, that's light. So yeah, the, it is very much a laptop that you can carry around. And it's got that aluminum finish, except for the bezel around the screen, which is plastic. That was w one of my biggest gripes with this one. It's like, really? Plastic? Everything else is aluminum. But the, the entire main shell is made out of aluminum, correct? Yes. Aluminium, since I technically live in the UK, aluminium, yes. <laughs> you, you're going to get beat down in the street with hugs, not, not <laughs> violence, but uh, very impactful hugs. That's yes. good to see. So what are we looking at as configured? Uh, how many wet, stinky caches or um, dry line Quite pounds? a few. Yeah. Uh, as configured with the i7-7500U and the M.2 SSD, this particular laptop will run you for uh 1260 euros uh or 1480 something um us dollars uh or in and around uh 1130 pounds which if you remember what i what i said about the slim book is that for that price point i expect at least eight hours of battery life when you're actually doing things uh the slim book didn't deliver, but this one did. In fact, it did so on a much smaller battery. That's how far the software optimizations go. They did a really good job with it. So Kudos, you, Tuxedo. You think it's just a good idea to... Not, not, not going to lie, I've definitely told people, like, step one of getting a pre-built, wipe it. Uh, is the battery <laughs> life worth... Well, uh, chances are most of you, if you do end up getting one, are going to do that. But if you're not, and you just want to buy 
something that works with Linux out of the box and you don't want to have to worry about it at all, this will give you performance and battery life up the wazoo with little to no concerns. And yeah, it's uh, I like this one. Go mm. figure. <laughs> all right. Let's talk about something exciting, but I'm just kidding. Um, Flatbacks and Ubuntu. There's a bug that I tried to reproduce. Not very important, apparently. <laughs> apparently not, man. It's a confirmed bug, but the importance is very low. Uh, this guy was having an issue installing... Uh, this guy being uh, Popey. Popey. Never heard of him. <laughs> never heard of him. Um, Alan Pope? <laughs> no, no. Maybe we can get somebody on from um, Canonical one day to tell him, tell us who he is. <laughs> it, it's a... Uh, wasn't able to get it up installed i followed through this i was not able to reproduce this on because this is downloading the flat pack through the browser the browser doesn't didn't know what to do with it i mean it couldn't, couldn't figure it out but then again i clicked on it and of course if you have the um what is it the gnome software plugin it's like boop okay it opens up the gnome software that loaded gave me an install thing did it no issue whatsoever um I'm not running into any issues on 1704 with flat packs installing them from FlatHub, but every now and then I will get a flat pack that's it's just packaged bad. It won't install. And there's there's nothing you can yeah, do. Yeah, there's bound to be some of that now that we're moving closer and closer to the whole universal packages thing. There mm-hmm. are going to be people who don't know how to package them and they will break. But uh the inter- uh, the interesting thing with Popey's issue is that Martin Wimpress also jumped in on this thread at one point and said, "Yeah, if I install the uh, Flatpak plugin for the GNOME Software Center, it works." So Popey tried to do that, and it wouldn't work for him. And there are a few other issues. And yes, the bug has been confirmed. But then, right there at the end, you see that the importance w- went from undecided to low. So are you trying to say that's the real story here? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Bringing you the dirt, the you real see? story at Canonical. Mm, yeah, this is a team. Be- <laughs> real uh, story. It's not a conspiracy at all. No. Uh, <laughs> Flatbacks have worked perfectly swimmingly with um, Kumbuntu. I've never had a problem with it. And I know it was like, but snaps, and they're pushing that, and this is conspiracy. It's like, just go back into the little hole. <laughs> Don't worry about it. This is just a bug. I was not able to reproduce it. It works on 1704 on our Tipsy Danger box business. Um, do you typically install? I mean, I installed the uh, Flathub repo. Yeah. That's probably not the correct terminology. They've changed the terminology for F all reason. <laughs> yeah, no, I also installed Flathub, but I don't think I've ever installed either a Snap or a Flatpak. But I do have a couple of app images lying around. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, app in, app images get get stuff done okay oh yeah <laughs> what do you need to try like, something oh you just uh, set it to executable and it runs uh, huh. <laughs> you just described my almost the exact experience i had the first time this app image okay what's this what do, oh, oh ch mod plus x then i yep. just launch it what moon future are we living in <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, the entire time I'm using the application, I do not trust it whatsoever. It's like, you, you're going to crash and you're going to hard lock. I'm going to have to SSH into this box. And it minute. gets better than that because since it's just a CH root, basically, mm-hmm. you can mount it as like mm-hmm. a CD. So you can have a look at what's inside there and you can see all the files that are there. App images, go figure. It is truly terrifying. Okay, so what? Uh, that's a flat Oops, story. So you. let's keep on going with that. Linux Mint blog, man. Uh, they have went flat. Some might even go, oh snap. Uh, a couple of things. They're talking about their KDE edition, LMD three eight hey, t-shirts. We're almost close enough to make those ourselves. But flat packs. You might have heard of flat pack app image or snap three solutions to a common problem. Duplication of effort is what old man Vin calls it, but I didn't coin that term. Um, yeah, they are going to be setting up the uh, flat pack goodness with yep. Mint, which makes sense because Mint's based on LTS. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, this is a good way to get the greatest and latest on an LTS-based distro without butchering everything. They, they go into a wall of text. 
to yeah. e- explain all of the reasoning behind this. And it's not really surprising since, you know, as for most people, flat packs kind of work out of the box with Ubuntu and there's no big issues with them whatsoever. So, yeah. And it, again, it very much makes sense because flat packs between like uh, snaps and flat packs, the biggest one that uh, flat pack currently has on snaps is that flat pack can have itself, um, a runtime, not too dissimilar to what Steam does, mm-hmm. but they instead of just being those libraries and they seldom get updated, it is a flat pack in and of itself that has all the libraries that all the other flat packs may or may not depend on. Now, most of uh, those you won't be using, and it's not even installed by default. It just installs itself when you install a flat pack that requires that runtime. So, in that respect, it will be much like Steam and just about work. For everyone too, uh, and apparently, Popey is saying that Snap has this too now. So yeah, there I go talking out of my bum. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean, it's cool. A lot of people are, I maybe to a point, kind of sh- an unfair point, shying away from Snaps because of mere. It makes sense, considering, you know, Canonical, on the edge of their IPO, they said, no, 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 that's dead. <laughs> I don't know, man. Then uh, I got just too much love for Canonical, because sometimes they go out and do stuff, sometimes it is duplication, but sometimes it's moonshot stuff that, hey, they got the money to do, and other companies just don't, so... Yeah, that's also one of the advantages uh, of having one of the a advantages big company of Linux you. is Linux. choice, you know, too. We've been living with you know, Debs, RPMs, Startout GZs, um, whatever Arch uses, I don't know. Um, I think it's just XZ files. Well, I mean, that's Slackware, man, so. Yeah. Slack packs. <laughs> Good it's to just see. XZip files, but uh, they work anyway. Kind of like you, man. I, I don't really use snaps other than I installed something. And I was like, oh, that's neat. And I uninstalled it. And it's like, well, it works. I might yep. have launched it somewhere in between that. I think I installed like OpenCiv SDL2 version or something like that. Just to test it out, um, I still use just PPAs. Way too many PPAs. I have a few of those, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Good on Mint. And, um, you know, if you want to use Snaps or if you want to use Flatpaks, App Images, what? that's cool. It's going to sort itself out one way or the yeah. other. So we'll, have, um, we'll be here waiting. Are you feeling a little bit paranoid? A little bit. A little bit. Well, then again, I always am. Well, I am a filthy immigrant. J- just because <laughs> you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get you, Pedro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, well, the guys behind Purism seem to really want to get rid of the management engine uh, that drives their core i sevens and i five laptops so they have been going at it for a long time actually for several months now uh to get rid of it disable it and instead of using just a regular uefi they use core boot to handle all of the low level firmware that your system needs in order to work and you know uh fluff piece from the register aside the uh big takeaway is that they got it. They got core boot running on the Skylake chipsets. Kudos to Purism. Seriously, they did it. Uh, now, uh, they blacklist the management engine. You can actually, they have a proof of concept, uh, quote unquote, exploit that you can run on their laptops and it won't work. But if you try to run it on another laptop, even if it's a very similar laptop with the exact same chip, the exact same chipset, it will work because management engine is still active. So they've demonstrably proved that it can be disabled and the system will still run after that. Now, Intel is not the only one to be guilty of uh, putting this shady black box firmware stuff into their hardware platforms. AMD has it too. Uh, They used to call it PSP. Um, But... You may even remember that there was an effort to try uh, to get AMD to open source uh, PSP. They said, oh, yes, it has the highest level of uh, attention at this point. They still haven't done anything. They 
probably will never do anything and let's be honest neither will will intel with management engine so if you want true freedom you will have to rely on stuff like core boot or something along those lines to get rid of that teeny tiny black box when your computer starts. That's like one of the things I'm thinking of is if you're going through this, is your, is your PC air gapped? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for total security, I, I agree with Intel. And they're like, it's not a purposeful backdoor. And yeah, okay, maybe the, and they're, they're saying that at DEF CON. 2018, 20, yeah, 2018 DEF CON, they're, they're going to be blowing some more holes in it. And I, mm -hmm. Intel's walk back, but it's really good for deployment. And it's like, I, I understand that you did something stupid on purpose and you didn't lock it down well enough. Yep. People saw it and now they're taking chunks out of it quite literally. <laughs> and I fully understand and support the ability to own your own hardware and not have any black boxes inside of anything. Yeah. that you bought and you paid money for and i get it um that said purism totes a front for the nsa <laughs> mm, not feeling that conspiracy theory at all i uh, no no not <laughs> at all totally i am uh, i am kidding purism and that's just too easy of a joke to make and now now i'm just envisioning someone at purism going oh expletive deleted how did he know no <laughs> our cover's blown and they just disappear <laughs> <laughs> that good on them i mean just 100 percent good on them and purism I mean, they even have hardware switches on their cameras mm -hmm. so if you they are trying they're still using core boot and much like narlin points out yes it still has proprietary blobs mm -hmm. but it's still a better alternative to microsoft's uefi because make no mistake microsoft were the ones pushing uefi Oh, Microsoft, if they had had their way, you could only be able to boot the Microsoft. Yep. <laughs> and, oh, that, that, and just, <sighs> Microsoft, you try sometimes, but <laughs> so much of your DNA is just tied into being <laughs> locked down bullcrap. My vocabulary is limited on Wednesdays. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I could explain that a lot better, but with a a lot more proof expletives mm. lots and lots of expletives so we finally got a name what's in a name pedro apparently it's bionic and it's beavers oh god there's there, you know there's a porn movie out there called that <laughs> come on that <laughs> can't be the only one I, in fact i'm pretty sure uh most of the people uh behind that name the ones that actually said you know what that's a good name for a distribution they are aware of that and they're just you know, going with it for the long. Oh, come on. What was the Fedora <laughs> glorious hot dog face or something like that? Uh, spherical cow. No. And, it was uh, Beefy Miracle. Was also... Beefy Miracle. Beefy Miracle, yes. <laughs> I, I, I mean, listen, okay. All right. Canonical. <laughs> <laughs> You're cool. Uh, Beefy Miracle, Bionic Beaver. Okay. You don't want to, uh, like, look up any, um, what's the fan art <laughs> don't stuff? Don't type that into Google Image Search with Safe Search off, is what I'm saying. Okay? <laughs> yeah, fanfic of that, stay away. And But then again, you could be the first distribution with fanfic. Yeah, they already have it. You know they have it. It's, pretty, it's a pretty big distro. They have it. They have to have it. Aardvarks, man. That's all I got to say. Aardvarks. <laughs> um, 1804 LTS. That's going to be its name, Bionic Beaver. So we have to wait until April 26th. And that's still a long time away, Vendrome. Yeah, no. April is, uh, is going to be a long time. There's bound to be someone, Strider, who is going to be running the beta at some point. And maybe they'll be able to let us know how that goes, Strider. Just saying. Possibly. I'm going to stick with 1704 until the uh, lot of people when he's like, hey guys, give it a month. Give it out 1710. G give it a shakedown. Let, let the brave souls know. Like, you don't know what you're talking about. Everything, everything's broke now. And that's just to be expected with anything because it's such, it's just nightmare fuel. Can you imagine doing your own distribution and trying to even remotely? I mean, if you have a 90% success <laughs> rate, 
doing good. Um, uh, I did kind of sort of help a uh, rolling release distribution at one point. The one that you drove out of business. We all remember, Pedro. <laughs> now, <laughs> Bionic it Beaver, drove itself out of business. I, I got to say, Bionic Beaver, I would have also accepted blur- uh, Belligerent uh, Barista. Yeah, I, yeah, I, Belligerent Barista is a pretty good one. Thought that would be uh, now, all the ones I can think of are dirtier than Bionic <laughs> Either. See, I was uh, Pedro. My brain was doing good. It was it was not in that mode until you said dirtier. Then it was like, oh, that's an option. Then I just went down. Damn. <laughs> yeah, no, that, those are the only ones going through my mind right now. So, canonical, <laughs> what have you done to me? <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm looking forward to another LTS. That will be good. Um, do we have one more in here? Or oh yes, we got two more. Two more. Okay, what's up? Let's see. We have the first one, which is the audiobook listener, <laughs> player, whatever you want to call it. Well, okay, your all right. Desktop. What's your option? Audiobook reader? Oh, go ahead, release that. <laughs> see, that's what I was going to say, and then I stopped myself. It's like, no, it's, it, it, it's not. You're not reading anything. You're listening to it. So I guess player, it'll have to be. Uh, it is called Cozy. Uh, I see what they're going for there. And... Uh, um, Ubuntu uh, says that it's a promising new audiobook player for Linux desktops. So, yeah, they basically give you a little bit of why you'd want to uh, listen to audiobooks. Uh, and they say that we haven't really had a dedicated audiobook player because, yes, you could use a regular standard audio player like Rhythmbox, VLC, what have you, to play your audiobooks. But they are missing some functionality. And when I compared this to, say, VLC, uh, well, let's see, no read-along. Yeah, you don't get that option in either this one or VLC. You don't get M4A or M4B. Well, uh, uh, VLC will sort of play M4A if it's in the right mood and it's the right release version. Uh, But there's also no Audible compatibility. The .aa files, the Audible audiobooks, those are loaded with DRM, so they don't work. Uh, There is no support for the uh, MPRIS spec, which if you are at all concerned about audio on Linux, chances are you've probably had a read at what uh, MPRIS does for your system. And that's that's part of the magic as to how Pulse Audio will let you have one audio stream going out of one device and another to another device and individually control the sound uh, levels and the balance between the two on whatever audio device you're outputting that stream to. So it is um, very important to have that be compliant with your audiobook player. Because let's say if people are listening with headphones on, they are just sitting at their PC doing something, but then they want to get up and walk away, do something else. The moment you switch to another uh, audio sync, it just goes that Right, but how many times are you trying to multitask with audio? Admittedly, not many Realistically, times. you might have something going on while you're playing a video game. Preferably this yes, podcast. But it's We've heard it improves like, gaming performance by up to 30%. It is, yes. <laughs> Don't have Chrome uh, playing YouTube videos like I do. <laughs> Your games will not perform well. Yeah, ultimately what I... If I'm listening to something in the background, it is old school. It's in the background somewhere on a speaker on one of my Sonoses mm-hmm. throughout the house. First world problems. Um, this now, to be fair, uh, just a quick ad. They do say that uh, Cozy will support most of these in the near future. So they have that going for them. Right. And uh, check it out. I mean, if you get a bunch, have they ever done audiobooks on Humble? Uh,. Uh, I don't know about audio, but I think they had one as one of the tiers, but they do have the book bundle, which may or may not include some audiobooks every now and then. I mean, all the power to anyone who does audiobooks. I got halfway through doing one and gave them back the money and just, just like, no, I'm, that's not going to happen. That That's really cool. It's currently only available and you got to build it yourself. You got to roll your own. Wicked easy to do, but... They know that that could be difficult for Arch users, so it's in the AUR. So you will be able to get it there prepackaged. No worries on that. Now, piece de resistance. 
Yeah, last one of the news. So, well, you probably, if you've been listening to the show for a while, we know we like ourselves some uh, open source hardware. And, well, we have one that is truly, truly open source it looks in the, the way part. that it definitely looks the part. Yeah, it's it looks very, very janky. So this is the MNT Reform, which is a DIY portable computer. And... They didn't just say, like, here's a chipset, uh, uh, here are the um, 3D printer files, print your own shell. No, 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 no. no. Uh, I think this was this is the picture we were talking about before we went live. Yeah. Like, yeah I have a Dell business class laptop from the early 2000s like that. <laughs> yeah, no, that totally looks like the most recent ones would be the Dell E6400s. You look one of those up on Google Image Search and it's like, oh, you could probably kill a few people with that. Neat. Uh, but yeah, no, they actually give you several options as to how you can go about building your own MNT um, laptop. And you can have uh, actual physical um, mechanical switches. You can 3D print uh, your own caps. You can have whatever keyboard uh, layout you want. Uh, you can use old keyboards and just uh, appropriate parts of those to run the... Um, I don't know, man. I mean, my inner hipster is like, if you break something like that out, all right, here's the legitimate problem, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I'm just going to go ahead and say that if you're listening to the audio version, think like an old risk-based um, Apple laptop, like one of the old school ones. It's kind of what you're looking at, but it looks like maybe it's been reassembled because I would give this project great looking project fun-wise. I don't know about actual aesthetics, but... yeah. Solid nine out of ten on good luck getting this through the TSA scale. Um, <laughs> I mean, if you slap like a Dell, uh, like Dell Precision E6400 sticker on it, that will probably look the part. No, no, then they're just going to steal it. <laughs> it's a TSA, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they actually go through all the things. Check out the link in the show notes and. Admittedly, some of them do look good. I like the one with the half-transparent keys with the very slight illumination behind it. That does look neat. But it is uh, the peak DIY jank when it comes to DIY laptops. I like stuff like that, though, man. Um, again, just don't take it through airports, kids. Is This is ARM-based. This is not x86, right? Yes. This is ARM, yeah. Hmm. You can even see the TD Tiny SOC when compared to a Euro coin halfway down the page. <laughs> That's pretty neat, man. Uh, did they got to give a parts list and what's, this, what's it going to cost? Or? Uh, no, and they do say it's part of the thing. It's uh, use your own old hardware, hmm. like old uh, keyboards you may have lying around, old cases for like old micro PCs from back in the 80s, early 90s. Yeah, they they do that, and most of the other parts, you can always find them uh, from the Raspberry Pi. Because, look, it's a screen that connects to an ARM board. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Pretty neat. Yeah. I'm going to say good on them. Do you know who is really, really neat, Pedro? Uh, Well, we don't have Jordan on this week, so I don't know. As <laughs> much as you two love each other, I don't believe I've ever heard <laughs> You call each other neat. Um, no. <laughs> what I'm talking about are the beautiful people who make this show possible, and that's you. You make us loud, live, independent, so we can get away with our silly nonsense, and we hope we're able to deliver back a little bit of value to you. Um, how's everyone supporting us, man? Well, uh, they have several ways of supporting us. Uh, if you happen to find yourself at linuxgamecast.com and you hit the support button, you have... A Patreon, you have Amazon affiliate links, you have an Amazon wish list in Get case you don't want to give us link. money. You, hey, you better bring up that new egg link. That was an argu arguous process to go through. Yes, I will bring it up. Uh, but in case you don't want to give us money directly, you can buy us some hardware for us to play with just to, you know... Uh, uh, get strider angry that's always a plus and you also have the new egg affiliate link which ven as he pointed out was very very uh proud to ha have gotten working and it works uh we cool. know that it works now so thank you all who did already make some purchases from new egg using our affiliate link 
you lot are awesome and it doesn't cost you anything similar to the amazon ones you just do your regular purchasing and we get a teeny tiny bit off the top pretty cool um if you do increase your pledge or become a new patron at patreon.com forward slash linux gamecast we get to talk and say kind of nice things about you Anyway. Kind of. I mean, we won't promise to, to say that we will be really nice. But hey, but man, listen, you're kind of underselling it, though, man. Because <laughs> if, if you hook us up with that patron, man, this is where I'm talking about. We can give you something back. Get access to our Discord. Oh, yeah. we got a bunch of people. Beautiful party patrons, we like to call them. And they're, chatting <laughs> they're the talking about hardware, too. Six days a week, video chat, audio chat, and all that fun stuff. And that that's also a place where I hang out. I'm usually yep. there with the rest of us. I have lost track of the dribble, but... <laughs> You get your customized RSS feed, so you can hear anything that we do kind of off the record, you know, stuff that does not necessarily need to be public, but, you know, kind of hush-hush. Mm -hmm. hush. <laughs> you uh, get a look behind the curtain, and it's You get hideous. to see the sauces <laughs> being made, and sometimes that's not necessarily a good thing. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, yeah, wish list. I don't like calling it a wish list. Uh, this thing it's something which we will inevitably at some point buy this is the shopping list well you'll notice that it goes up and down regularly and you're like wait mm -hmm. a minute shouldn't we have some more names on frank's wall N no yeah uh, speaking of which didn't someone forget to add their name to a purchase this week they did we, we kind of got a mystery person uh, i do apologize uh, what i was trying to finish that off was I'll put it on the list and I'm like, screw it, I'm just going to buy it. So <laughs> that might be one of our problems. But uh, yeah, let me see if I have that loaded up. Do I have it loaded up? Oh, I have it loaded up because I received. It will be in post-production. This. Oh, pfft. <laughs> oh, will it, Pedro? Am I going to do that in post? How about I do it in real time? <laughs> Where's your flying spaghetti monster now, son? That's right. Got the picture loaded up. We got some new audio noodles. They were on there in preparation for fancy, the new fancy cables. mixer that we'll hopefully be picking up pretty soon. Um, it, we didn't get a name, so if this is you, let us know. Uh, the company gave me 50 what stinky American bucks. Uh, can't be used in Euroland stores, so enjoy your new strangulation possibilities. That's what I'm talking about, and that's what I like to hear. Uh, yeah. I, I sent you a thank you note. We're going to do our best not to caradine ourselves, but you know we can't pinky swear on that because you know sometimes things happen. <laughs> and let's see. I, I think that's it. Oh, if you could share the show, that'd be awesome. Here's yeah. here, here's all the beautiful party patrons. 106 currently, and all the fun stuff. 229 wet stickies. Yeah, <laughs> you you let us do a couple of shows a week. That's cool. We Zombie Stomping Tuesday. Come check us out. Join in with that. And, and, um, there's Pedro. He's poking infinity. You get access to the pre-pre super shows on Saturday. One thing I want to mention for those still listening, because some people have skipped over this mm -hmm. and, uh, they're going to be missing out. Let me see. Where was this week's on this post? Linux Gamecast Weekly 270. Assemble my own rabbit on this one. Why is this? There's a way of give. We're giving away th not one, not two, but three copies of Layers of Fear, which, if you're easily scared and you really like doors, probably the perfect game for you. If you're a patron, just go to that section. All we have to do it's spooky Halloween. All you have to do is leave a comment on that post with your worst Windows experience. A terrifying, horrifying, petrifying windows experience up to and including just having to look at the dang thing <laughs> and uh the top three by whatever metric that we'll end up using to judge them could be the entertaining ones or the truly horrifying ones you'll get a copy of layers of fear steam key too so no gog yes. or anything like that uh thanks everyone for supporting this uh let's get into a couple of slices of pie, Pedro. Ah, uh, yes. Pumpkin so, pie, check it out. Oh, it's tis the season. You ooh, do actually sell pumpkin, pumpkin spice. Pie. Pumpkin spice spice. Like, <laughs> we've gone. It's full a pumpkin circle. spy. All sure. right. Coming to you from ZDNet Raspi. Microsoft comes up with a cool idea to stop it overheating. 3D printable design keeps the Raspberry Pi 3 cool. Even when running at full throttle for lengthy periods. Uh Four post okay. and a fan, maybe? 
Uh, so yeah, there are two Raspberry Pis or a Raspberry Pi and an add-in board to drive the monitor with a teeny tiny little fan and the heat spreader. I, I don't ah. know. I, <laughs> hmm. hmm. <laughs> I can't figure out what bothers me more about this. Like really? It's what? like really? Does it do? Uh, or that they were proud. Or they were proud. Oh, it's enough. a. It's just a. It's the fan mount. Oh, yes. They uh, were proud enough of this, Pedro. Obvious. They were proud yes. enough of this to <laughs> try to get some publicity out of it. Fan mount, Microsoft. Really? That is genuine. Listen, hey, good. Thank, thanks for releasing that. But th that really does have all the flavorings and um smells and uh yeah of like a hated intern being put on a project here go do something <laughs> and have you ever had any problems with your pies overheating nope no no then again i don't i never really did anything that was constantly demanding 100 see that that was my exact logic train on that it was like but have i ever done anything computationally intensive yeah it's like no <laughs> uh-uh um no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, I guess we'll have uh, Linux Nuru let us know on some feedback next well, week. Uh, quite possibly. I mean, we were talking in uh, Discord and just, I mean, I, I got to thinking, I don't think I've ever in, like run an X session on a Raspberry Pi. Have. I have run an X session on a Raspberry Pi, just a regular default LXD one, but I have. Oh, Steve. Steve. Steve has a very, very valid point. <laughs> they had to overclock it to run Windows. <laughs> Fair enough. Because as most people try to forget, I'm surprised not including Microsoft, Windows 10 is available for Raspberry Pis. I mean... I think Microsoft wants people to forget about that. <laughs> I kind of want an RT tablet. Why? Because <laughs> Microsoft is like 100% scorched earth like we never made those what are you talking about those don't exist uh, I know that Nori's mom has one of those because it was pretty cheap um, for teachers at one point and then they realized oh wait no no one wants these but she had already bought hers so yeah. it's like a trophy of failure that's why I want to <laughs> frame it and see it, it, uh, example A don't do this <laughs> If you're, all you're doing is running Office, and that's all she's doing for the most part, it works. Don't know. Still kind of want one. Wouldn't pay for one, though, no. So don't. <laughs> no offers there. Um, It is just in time for Thanksgiving. Steampunk tentacle hat. Why is it steampunk? Because, look, there's a steam thing behind it. Mm -hmm. And that is about it. Now, I looked at it, and I thought, you know, a few more tentacles, make it slightly bigger. Maybe go to Minnesota and Pedro, chat about... Pedro, 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 you, you don't need... No bedroom talk. <laughs> Maybe go uh, chant, uh, do a weird chant about how one of the old ones rests in his place in Rlia. Yeah, maybe invoke the almighty Cthulhu. Uh, well, as Arthurian says, hentai hat. <laughs> That was the obvious one, and I should have seen that one coming considering what I said about the bionic beaver. My bad. I huh. failed you tonight. I'm sorry. That's... That's a... Uh, hmm. <laughs> it's a thing. It's good that people... I, listen, it's always... I have to... I have to think. I always say, it's good that it exists. It's good that the technology exists to do really whatever you want, even if it's bizarre stuff like this, because I know I've made some bizarre inventions that if they could talk would currently be screaming, kill me. And <laughs> oh, God, right. please just kill uh, me. I've man. made so many Rick and Morty butter robots. <laughs> like, what is my, I was bored, man. Let's just be honest. That's all it is. And, um, good. And, did it say what type of Pi it was using? Was it a Pi Zero? Or? Uh, I'm guessing probably a Pi 3 to drive all the servos. But yeah, you could probably, if you have the um, programming chops, you could probably use uh, just a Zero. Yeah, it looks like a Pi 3 from the picture. It hmm. doesn't specify. Well, if you have anything ooky, spooky, Linux related and or Pi related, let us know about it by heading over to linuxgamecast.com. 
hit the contact button and it is up and working. We have uh, pretty simple rules. I mean, mm -hmm. primarily the older rules, no spam and stuff like that. But if you're going to be plugging something, read them and do that. Select the right category. This is LWDW for that. Or, you know, it's a relationship advice, which we give out on the gaming show on Saturdays. If that is your thing, do the captcha. You can multiply. Hopefully you yes. can, because something I learned about myself is um, I've forgotten my multiplication tables once I... <laughs> you can't math no more. That was uh, very sad. And it, <laughs> you know, you, you use it, you lose it, right? And yeah, yeah, it's a muscle like every other. So if you don't practice it, you're going to be bad. And it wasn't gone to the point. It was gone to the point where the impression was still. It was like you used to know this. You used to not have to go. <laughs> After I ran out of fingers, like screw this. Where's calculator? And uh, yeah, I learned that when I was testing because we did some upgrades on the back end of the site, and the mailer kind of went wonky on me for a few hours and. So that's the thing. Let us know. Send us that. We live off of your emails. I think we have, what, two to this week? Yes. Two tiny bits of uh, feedback. One is actually a question. Mm. Uh, Clyde the Weeaboo. <laughs> uh, he, uh, he asks, could someone pretty please point me to a simple guy to network my Linux PCs? And that question left me a bit bewildered. Like, what do you mean? Uh, a GUI would be useful. Okay, id Samba the only option. Well, now that you mentioned Samba, I think I know what you're talking about. You Don't want no, to wait, set hey, up hey, a hey, network? No, no, listen, man. Id <laughs> quit supporting Linux with. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what do you think? To the point about? where uh, Carmack at one point even worked for Bethesda. You know, the ones that actively hate Linux. I'm suing. So uh, <laughs> So, yeah, no, it's, uh, so he's asking if Samba is the only option for setting up a network of, I'm assuming, shared drives for your Linux boxes. I was about to say, yeah. really, all you need is an Ethernet cable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it isn't. And, uh, well, it really comes down to what you want to use. There's probably a GUI for Samba out there somewhere. I haven't really used a GUI to set it up. Wait a but minute, just uh, doesn't. I don't know if it would count as GUI. I'm pretty sure Samba's got a web interface. Yes. Yes, it does. That you can localhost. Well, mm -hmm. just run off the... Yep. Yeah, it does. And you can also use the... Uh, if you have an SFTP drive uh, that's visible to your local network, you can just... SFTP or even SSHFS, Samba. If you have... A drive that's visible to your network. You can probably use Thunar, Nautilus, uh, Kaha. Uh, what's the KD one? Dolphin. You could probably just use those and find the network location and just put in the uh, IP address, and mm -hmm. it should find it with the appropriate port. Assuming. Uh, I typically yeah. run Samba. Because you never know what else you're going to need to connect to that. Well, I, I'm talking about just for the file server. Yeah, and if you do have uh, Windows devices on that same network, Samba will let you have those network shares available to the Windows devices as well. Mm. Something which SSHFS doesn't have. And since I, well, I didn't used to have any Windows uh, installs in this house now I do because Nori is going to university, so that one doesn't get to see the network drives anymore because I'm not even going to worry about it. Everything is set in SSHFS, and I'm not going to touch it. Um, I'll back up SSHFS. If you just need to get something done, I call it quick and dirty networking. If I need a temporary uh, communication noodle between one box to another, mm -hmm. that's how we're going to get that done. Um, Samba... It is basically set up for our sync. If you're wondering, my XFCE4 brother in Thunar supports it out of the box, even though you wouldn't know it by Google searching. <laughs> um, no, it's amazing what Thunar actually supports. <laughs> you you have to discover it. I mean, it's very much gamified as in poorly documented. <laughs> it's like, it's your experience, mm. your Thunar. So, um, last but not least, uh, Tuxedo Computers or... You know, the insane people who actually let me have their laptop for a month. <laughs> they they wrote us back. And, and to be fair, 
not to really talk about them, they were a lot nicer than the other computer company. Oh, yeah. Much nicer. <laughs> Uh, so uh, Tuxedo wrote back and they left us a comment on the YouTube video review and they have two points to add. Uh, the bezel was uh, has to be as big as the keyboard is way bigger, wider than it is regularly with 13.3 inch laptops. They decided to go with the bigger bezel because, well, they wanted to make the keyboard junkies happy. I know what you're doing there. I see your point, and that was probably the best answer you could have come up with. And the second point was actually something I uh, mentioned in the written review, which was maybe when I have the money to afford one of their laptops, because they're nice laptops, but they're a bit expensive, uh, maybe Coffee Lake will be available That's by then. That's a very day. important thing you to go ahead and throw out there. Pages is like, <laughs> I bet you're getting free laptops. We don't get free laptops. We, no, we got to send them back. We don't get free laptops. Uh, uh, I most of the other laptops uh, well all the other laptops I had them for two weeks so I had to be very concise in my tests and make sure I got them right and as many or as uh, uh, least few tries as possible but with this one well they let me keep it for a month so I got to uh, play with it some more <laughs> they, they, they and, clearly had one in the office that had like a weird odor to it and they just wanted to get it aired out <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, no, it is. It was a genuinely good laptop. It's not cheap, but it is sturdy. It is light. It, the keyboard is not terrible. So good on you. And yes, the bezel is big, which is something I mentioned in the video. There's a really big bezel, really big plastic bezel. Yeah, I kind of agree with you, man. I mean, once you have something like nice, super slim, sexy, listen, man, I'm not like laptop shaming, so no hashtags on that. <laughs> and you open it up and you, you don't have like a near bezel -less. Yeah, like the Dell XPS 13. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> but hey, no, it does have a bezel. It's plasticky. It's one of the things I complained about the most, and I guess they had the right answer for it. In order to have a decent keyboard, we had to have a bigger bezel, and okay, fair enough. Hmm. <laughs> That's the thing. That's going to do us, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. You've been beautiful. You've been real. Thanks for showing up, watching us live. If you're listening to us after the fact, I uh, do like to say, sm uh, what is it? Smash that like button, fam, on the YouTubes. Yeah, I, I <laughs> something like that. I honestly don't watch those channels anymore. Uh, you don't ever have to watch those channels because you can tell by the thumbnails not to. Um, if you're listening, there's a video component. Come check that out. It's a podcast. So we're not doing too bad. We get about uh, 5,100, 5,200 last time I looked a week. Downloads. That's uh, sizable for this uh Something that we never Kinda promote. Midweek um, show that we decided to do because people were giving us money. <laughs> well, that's exactly what I love about this show. Is this show, if you don't know, if you're new to the show, is and was and still is a Patreon goal. And oh, yes. it's like everyone wants us to do this. And we hit this Go goal. Figure. It's us. We don't know how not to do something, even though it's usually a bad idea. We just keep charging on. We've been doing this for over a year now. And probably you give us like another two, three years. We'll kind of sort of have some idea what we're doing. Five years in Linux Gamecast, just getting our feet under us. So <laughs> to keep that in mind, um, Pedro, we're going to beautiful people. Um, see you well, on the internet. You can find me. Uh uh, by just typing Pedro Mateos on Google, and I'm the right below the images, the first two links. That's me. One's my Twitter, the other one's my Google Plus. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I am what? Just at Vin Stone. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I don't even don't don't even put the at. Just type in Vin Stone because I'm all internet famous and stuff. <laughs> Not really. Not really. But Google knows who I am because I use it a lot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's, get, it's getting kind of scary. Someone actually brought it up at work. Oh, yeah, you're one of the first results when I Googled your name. Oh. oh, oh is that oh, not, oh. I don't know. This is maybe because I've been on the internet so long. Is that not normal? I, I always just assume. No, it's not normal. Okay. I was kind of sort of enjoying the random internet anonymity thing. You are an, such an attention whore. There is no way. Uh, no, 
Uh, I may look like an attention. I have five years of video evidence. <laughs> you do not want to tangle but yes, with me. Yes, that's because I want to, you know, have people at least seem like hey, they're let's interested. Do those credits. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, these people, you know, besides us, there's Ben, and there's me, and Shout now, yes, now we got all executive you. producers, baby, the lovely, lovely people who actually give us money. Yeah, Negative these producers. people, they're awesome. They are the, uh, you gotta work on your English, because I, I like whoring ourselves out, but give us my support the show, man. <laughs> I would no, give us money. <laughs> That, uh, it's just like I, I back five projects on Patreon right now myself, and I was like, I give you money. I was like, no, dude, I support these guys. I was like, I would give them money, unless you just like, like that. That's cool. All right, make it rain. Come on, dance. <laughs> G give me a pole. I'll go to town.